it isn't my opinion that there are impacts of aquaculture on the environment. It is the science, that, whether it's science I've done myself or science other people have done where they've gone out and had designed experiments to look at these impacts, to measure these impacts, and to conclude, yes, we have impacts from fish farms on eelgrass. Yes, the catchability of lobsters is impacted when the farm is in production. Yes, we've got copper accumulating under net pens. Yes, we've got microbial resistance developing in the bottom because of antibiotic use. So that is the science. It's not, a, you know, it's not an opinion. And what happens, industry is just not required to pay the price for treating its waste and its impacts, whether it's disease transmission or escapes, it operates with impunity. These farms are pathogen culture facilities, and that's been clearly demonstrated for parasites such as sea mice, but we have to demonstrate it also for viruses now because like corporations run things through the burden of proof that they're doing anything wrong, no matter how obvious it may be to anybody with training in ecology, the burden of proof is on us. And the threshold of proof is very high. So here we are in the middle of the night taking water samples at a salmon farm to demonstrate something that is obvious to anybody with a high school education in ecology. That's the way the world works. That in paint, tobacco, arsenic, vinyl chloride, the burden of proof is very high. It would be easy for salmon farmers to let us walk onto the farm, take a water sample right out of the pen, take it away. It wouldn't cost them anything. It would be easy to do. They could do it for us. And they ought to, really, because you would think that they would like to know what viruses they have in, in their fish. But no, you can't go within the yellow buoys surrounding the farm. And they followed us. They followed us with a boat. They hired a special boat just to follow us around and watch and video us to make sure we didn't go inside the yellow buoys to, to take water samples. That's all. Water samples and measure temperature and so on. of salmon farms are argued when there's a published paper produced from an independent scientist and it's argued and debated. What is then said is there is no scientific consensus to make any sort of conclusions to get farms out of the water and the status quo is maintained. We see the federal government come out with study after study after investigation after setting up a scientific panel and I believe these are just delays that are used to, to delay any action on getting rid of, rid of salmon farms. The science here is pretty obvious. And um, so why, why, why this high burden of proof? But then after reading a lot of environmental history, I realized that that's just the way it is. It's like tobacco, right? Tobacco companies hired all sorts of what I would call psyositudes to blow smoke in the face of the public, so to speak, if you forgive the pun. And they were very effective. And the salmon farmers do the same thing. What's, what is particularly galling is that the salmon farmers seem to really control the government agencies. They seem to control the British Columbia government. They certainly control the federal government. And um, I find this very uh, distressing, you know, both as a Canadian and, and as a scientist. Uh, 
when science didn't act on uh, knowledge that the cod stocks, for example, were in trouble and those stocks collapsed, or when we knew that wild Atlantic salmon were in trouble and we didn't act, and now there's endangered species in the Bay of Fundy. Those are the lessons that we should be reflecting on now. And so what's happening on the West Coast, we need to act now. The outcome, if we don't, is just too sad to contemplate. You know, it's too heartbreaking to contemplate. And it will happen if we don't do anything right now.